Welcome back to the Muppet Monster Adventure Let's Play. In this part, we'll be doing the first level of the Neverleaf Forest, which is Hike of the Haunted. Uh, in this level, uh, things have changed slightly, and now, instead of getting 5 Muppet Tokens per level, it's 6. But usually this just means there's another one lying around and we don't actually have to do an additional challenge or anything. Uh, but yeah, this is another level that reuses the title theme music. And it's like, based on like campsites and stuff I guess. Like, I guess haunted campsites or ghost story type. Yeah, who knows. Yeah, this level has um, a bit of back and forth to it in some places. Uh, it's got one very annoying enemy type that I'll explain in a moment. Uh, and well, this is the only bit of swimming in the level, so at least at least that's over with. <laughs> uh, it also introduces a, a small gimmick where. Uh, I think these only appear in two levels, but yeah, the uh, rather uh, boisterous uh, bird that pokes its head out of the uh, climbing like walls as an obstacle, and I think it actually makes you fall off, so I have to be careful of that. Uh, I have to be careful of the campfires too, because they program them so that you can actually get hurt by touching them. But yeah, they got like, uh, they got uh, living bear traps as enemies. Uh, these little brown things there, uh, they're the really annoying enemies because they're very small, so they're pretty hard to hit and they're very fast too. And uh, for some reason some of them drop evil energy, but some don't. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, the Huntsman. The, uh, what would you call it? The, uh, the toxic masculinity. <laughs> uh, highly testosterone, uh, man? I don't know. Nah. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what they would probably be called nowadays, but <laughs> uh, to us, it, it'll just be the Huntsman. Uh, what I wonder though is, if this game was like remade, would they have to change that enemy? Seeing as like nowadays they have to change enemies to accommodate to a more uh, like cautious. Uh, society that we have nowadays. Whereas I, for f when it comes to like guns and stuff, they always have to change them up so they're um, in some way like a fantasy. There, there's a fantasy element to it, or some sort of unrealistic element. Such a, uh, this really annoying enemy just won't. <laughs> I'm trying to hit him, but he just gets me twice instead. And all that for just one evil energy. Uh, yeah, because when they when they did uh, when they had to remake Crash, they uh, or what not when they had to when they did remake Crash. Uh, but honestly, they. I kind of had to, to get everyone back on board. Uh, they changed Pinstripe's um, gun so that it still looks like a Tommy gun, but it doesn't fire as quickly and actually shoots out little rockets instead of bullets. Um, I mean, if that's allowed, I don't know why they just don't do that with most things. Because at least, because I didn't even know there were uh, rockets until someone pointed them out. I thought they'd actually just gone with like 
slow moving bullets. But with uh, with Spyro they had to make it so guns were either water pistols or shooting out sludge. And then any gun that shot out lasers was fine because I guess they don't exist yet in the real world in that way. Um, but I wonder because they, they shoot out a big like yellow bullet with eyes. So is that considered like cartoony enough to to not have to be changed? Uh, just a thought because it's un unlikely that this game would be remade. But then again, licensed games have been remade, but or are going to be at least. Um, but like, I don't think the Muppets is quite that popular at the moment to uh, to warrant such a uh, thing to be done. Because uh, licensed games nowadays aren't really a thing anymore. A lot of them are just... Uh, uh, they usually go with like mobile games or something small online. Or it's usually a, a pre-existing game, like a puzzle game but with a uh, famous IPs um, like mark on it uh, and as we just saw there that was the other cryptic uh, secret area so like the only way you would really know that is either by uh, getting coins and going in the uh, gallery and finding the right golden clapperboard or I guess maybe I mean, it's a bit of a stretch, but it kind of is like behind a waterfall, isn't it? And there's always something behind a waterfall in every video game ever. But it's another fake wall, which uh, makes you have like one ufology away from completing, which is strange. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, they don't really make proper games anymore for for licensed things, um, which is which is a shame because sometimes they're actually I mean a lot of them aren't, but sometimes they can be pretty decent, like this one and uh, like Toy Story, but. I mean they uh I don't know they they did uh last year release a uh, an Asterix and Obelix game but it wasn't as good as it's like it's like a sequel that came out at least like 10 years after the last one but it's not quite as good And now upcoming is a challenge where we have to destroy those totem like thing, uh, statues and that were uh, around the stage. Uh, why do we have to destroy these? Uh, apparently they're evil. But I don't know, they seem to be pretty happy. They're just like dancing and chanting and stuff. So the only thing I can think of is it's uh I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's a racism thing. Maybe 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 like we've got a uh, Christopher Columbus deal going on here, where we're actually like invading a secret land. And yeah, I decided to hit Pepe because why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we we could be like invading a, a sacred like. Uh, oh, I got that one. Uh, <laughs> Like a sacred, uh, like Indian ground or something, or is there? And and we're we're just destroying destroying their um, creations. We're taking their land, and we're setting up camp so we can bring in uh, more Europeans. <laughs> Uh, 
And with that, we have conquered uh, America. So now, um, so now that's under the Muppet um, Empire. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, one thing I don't think I've mentioned yet, actually, is, um... I don't think I actually properly explained yet the, how the chests work, and I know it's pretty late because we're almost halfway through the game, but... Uh, the pumpkin chests are, uh, like the standard ones. They can be broken by either the spin or the, uh, glove. Uh, the dark blue ones with the skull on can only be spun. They're a bit too, um... Secure for the glove, and the helmets can only be broken with the glove, and spinning them just causes the helmet to spin. Well, we just got a uh, fly like an eagle reference. I wonder if uh, Pepe's watched Space Jam, because uh, I. I yeah, recommend that he does, and if you haven't seen that, I recommend that you do, because it, it's it's not like it's an amazing film or anything, but it's definitely one of my favourites. Uh, I watched it a lot. But yeah, that was a challenge where we get to fly, and we just have to fly through rings. Uh, by fly, I mean just stay left and right. Your um, altitude is actually um, controlled by which like checkpoint you're gonna fly through. Uh, the only thing is, with that challenge, it's not very clear that that's a challenge. He's not stood next to anyone, uh, he doesn't have anything near him to indicate that that's gonna be a challenge. So I don't really know what um, whether there was supposed to be something there, because sometimes, sometimes Pepe's there and he says stuff, but uh, when he's not near anything, he's usually just saying something silly or giving a, a reminder or a, a tip like, Oh, remember, lava is hot, so don't step on it. <laughs> uh, so we've almost got all the evil energy in this level, but we've still got to go back and get that last... Uh, Muppet token because they decided to put the S right where the end of the level is. And there we go, and now we have to go all the way back there just to pick it up. And you know, I really should have thought it through and maybe just exited the level when I picked up the thing instead of having to run straight back. Well, at least we got all the even energy. Uh, nicely kept in our uh, pink backpack, because uh, Robin is a brave ma uh, frog. Although what's strange is in the opening cutscene, the uh, uh, the backpack is um, is brown, but in game it's pink. I don't know if that's just to make it like stand out more, and they didn't have time to change it in the uh, in the cutscene. Oh, if Robin is just. Uh, he, he just likes pink, and he's just a, um, he's a real, he's a real manly frog, and, um, and said, no, nah, actually, I want, I want a pink bag. <laughs> I'm not afraid. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm going to be defeating monsters, I might as well do it in style. And with that, we have everything, and the level is nearly complete. Well, it, it is complete, we just got to stand on the portal thingy. And that we've done. So yeah, that was Hack of the Haunted, that wasn't too bad of a level. Um, these levels are flying by a bit quick, uh, more quickly than I thought they would. I think that's just because I know what I'm doing with these. Anyway, in the next part we will be doing the River Vial. I'll see you then.